Leanne, the cruise campaign is celebrating a sort of milestone tonight, right? They are, Karina. Now, not many candidates do this, but today Cruz completed what's known as the full Grassley, meaning he made campaign stops in all 99 counties in Iowa. So really going into tonight, it's not like the Cruz campaign can say that they didn't do everything they could to reach as many Iowans as possible. Now, we are set up at the Iowa State Fairgrounds. Cruz held a rally here last night reiterating to Iowans his conservative and consistent record, asking them to caucus for him. Here's what he had to say about the grassroots efforts his team has built here over the past few months. Bringing together young people, bringing together Republican women and small business owners and farmers and, and Tea Party activists and, and people throughout this state fed up with what is happening in Washington. Voters in Iowa have gotten very close access to all of the candidates running for president in coffee shops and schools over the past month. Now, whoever wins Iowa tonight will gain some momentum as the focus shifts to nominating contests in both New Hampshire and South Carolina. And Cruz really isn't wasting any time. We got a look at his schedule for the week ahead. And Karina, he already has campaign stops in both South Carolina and New Hampshire starting tomorrow. Leanne Wallace has been at the Capitol all day. Leanne, the governor has already signed this bill into law, so what are protesters hoping to accomplish here? Well, they want Governor Greg Abbott to know that they're ready to sue over a law they see as discriminatory. Protesters showed up in full force at the state capitol on the last day of the legislative session. They came from all over the state, even other states. The groups have been chanting and even unveiled a banner in the House gallery reading, See You in Court. Protesters call the law hateful, saying it discriminates against minorities because it bans so-called sanctuary cities and compels local police to enforce federal immigration law. They also fear it'll split up families and hurt police community relations. But supporters say it's about following the rule of law and keeping Texas safe from undocumented immigrants who are committing crimes in this state. Still, lawsuits against the law have already been filed. We will continue to follow this at the Capitol and much more on the last day of the regular legislative session. But for now, at the state capitol, Leanne Wallace, Spectrum News. With the third and final debate behind them. People will know once and for all Hillary Clinton should be the next president of the United States. She has the policy knowledge, she has the judgment, she has the skill set. Hillary Clinton supporters are hopeful her performance will be the final big push needed to secure the White House. It would be tremendously historic and tremendously overdue. Texas Democrats watched as Clinton and Donald Trump clashed on everything from abortion in the Supreme Court to gun control. She's been in uh, this game for 30 years and she's she's a very bright person. She studied the issues. You know, he he is just uh, winging it totally. Clinton has maintained a comfortable lead over Trump in polls recently across the nation. And here in Red Texas, she's trailing Trump by just single digits. But I love hearing how she's going to be going after the red states like Arizona and uh, 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 Georgia, and I, mean, I think that's really brave. Um, I mean, she's not just looking to win, she's really looking for a landslide. It's a landslide these Democrats say will carry them to victory come November 8th. In downtown Austin, Leanne Wallace, Capitol Tonight. Well, Karina, you could just feel how tight-knit of a community the law enforcement community really is being inside that auditorium. As far as the ceremony goes, it was emotional at times. It was also very powerful at times as President Obama and other leaders once again urged Americans to come together. As the mayor of Dallas put it, the soul of their city has been pierced, and the nation is also reeling from what seems to be a growing divide. We are not as divided as we seem. And I know that because I know America. President Obama seems to have taken this latest tragedy extremely personally. I've seen how inadequate words can be in bringing about lasting change. I've seen how, how inadequate my own words have been. Speaking of that racial divide, that was clearly the catalyst for last week's attack. The president said, we have a long road ahead. Whether you are black or white or Hispanic or Asian or Native American or of Middle Eastern descent, we have all seen this bigotry in our own lives at some point. As the families of those lost mourn their fallen heroes, former President George W. Bush also called for a renewed sense of unity. Too often we judge other groups by their worst examples. 
while judging ourselves by our best intentions. While makeshift memorials continue to build and protests across the country continue to call for justice, the president urged Americans to focus on the common heart that we all share. President Obama said that he's been to too many memorials during his time in office and cautioned that the sense of unity that we feel after tragedies like this often diminishes too soon. Alaikum. Peace to everyone. That's the message these Texas Muslims want heard loud and clear. Love everybody. <laughs> That's what I want to mention. But many Muslims across the country haven't felt that love recently. Lately, I've been feeling, you know, a little bit uncomfortable. A lot of that discomfort follows the executive order signed by President Donald Trump last week. It temporarily suspends travel to the U.S. for seven majority Muslim countries. I don't think it makes us safe. I think it alienates us from the rest of the world. There were a handful of protesters at the rally who support President Trump's efforts to combat terrorism by implementing the travel ban. He wasn't saying ban Muslims. He was saying ban Muslims since our leaders, until our leaders can figure out what the hell is going on. Like, oh, well, if, if you're not even going to acknowledge that Islam has any role, then what are you even doing? Security was tight at Tuesday's rally. Supporters even created a human barricade around the rally after rumors of anti-Muslim protesters. I couldn't even get through the shield. I was trying to get up here to speak and there were so many people. I've never seen this before. Texas Muslim Capital Day has been going on each session since 2003 and it's typically been peaceful. That wasn't the case two years ago. Islam will never dominate the United States and by the grace of God it will not dominate Texas. But moving forward, Muslims and their allies hope that the religious freedoms this country was founded on will apply to them as well. The Quran says to return evil with love. At the state capitol, Leanne Wallace, Capitol Tonight.